Hello and welcome back to another one of our um, fitting and guide videos. Um, today's video is going to be about an antique pepper mill which is this one here this is the model that we have um, unlike I'm told some others on the market this has got cast metal gears it's got cast metal grinding burr in there it comes um, if you can see that with the handle pointing inwards this may seem obvious but I'm going to say this now because someone is going to write and ask me mine has got the handle pointing inwards if you unscrew the little grub screw there take the handle off turn it round and screw it back on then the handle will be the right way um, so that's hopefully that bit covered there there's a little door in the top there for the pepper grinds to go now there's um, a few ways of doing this as there always is um, depending on what type of model you want what tools you've got and what skill you have um, I'm going to show you a model that's perhaps slightly different I'm sure there are others of these um, being shown on on YouTube somewhere um, when you see um, some of the other models that people make on the internet you will see what they do is actually screw that straight onto the top of a blank and the blank has got a 25 mil or one inch hole um, all the way through and that's basically um, what they've done there's nothing wrong with that it's a very simple way of doing it if you want to keep the kit as simple as possible you can do what I'm going to show you today is a slightly different model um, for a variety of reasons. One is to actually inset the top here um, and inset these little um, cast lugs um, so the top of the, the finished project is flush and it looks much, much better, um, much more aesthetically pleasing that way. Forgive the traffic. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is to make a two-part base for this. The one, the one will be with the 25mm hole all the way through. Obviously the grinds have to fall out. Um, but what you find when you use these things, um, and that is essentially what they're for using, is every time you pop it down on the table, um, you will get some grinds that fall out of the grinder. And this happens with all pepper mills um, and salt mills. You pop it down on the table and grinds fall out. And what you get is a mess. Um, so what I've got is a, a walnut blank um, and I'm going to make a two-part um, section for mounting this on um, so you can grind and you, it will also catch the messy bits at the bottom um, when it's been stored and not in use um, and I'll run through the whole process um, and we'll get cracking right away. So I've got a blank here um, this is just over 60 mils square um, and it's um, about 150 millimeters long it might be slightly longer actually this one but um, on the instructions and the instructions are on the website um, it's actually 160 this bit um, I've marked the center now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this block round to start with just roughly round between centers and I'm then going to make a dovetail at one end to fit in the dovetail jaws of my chuck once this piece is in the chuck I'm not going to take it out there is some drilling to be done but just to um, stop any movement I'm actually going to remove the piece a bit later on with the wood in the chuck together and then mount it for drilling Now I've cut my dovetail tenon here, I'm going to fit it in the chuck um, but I'm also going to bring up the tailstock to make sure that it's centred. It's important we get a centre point here because in a minute we're going to draw some lines um, across when we've got this end flat. So I've got it in the centre there and I'm going to tighten this up in the chuck. nice and secure now it's important that this is really secure and this is the point where so we've got this nice and centered now so it is going to have to come off the lathe to have the holes drilled for the lugs in the pepper mill um, but as I said earlier what we're going to do is leave the blank in the chuck and the chuck will go back in exactly the same place any movement and you won't get a good fit of the top and the lugs into this part here so having secured that what we're now going to do is remove the tail stock uh, and just going to make sure that this end is completely flat having got the end flat what we're now going to do is put a cross uh, at 90 degrees um, to 
start to mark where the drill holes have got to be for the lugs. Now I need to make sure that the next line is exactly 90 degrees to that one. That looks about right to me. What we now need to do is mark the exact point of where we're going to drill each of the holes for the lugs. Now to mark the points of the lugs we can do one of two things. We can set the pepper grinder on the top and where we've got the lines make sure that the centre of each lug is lined up on the lines. That'll make sure it's centred and we can then draw a little line roughly at the centre. So I'll do it that side. Roughly at the centre there and then remove that and carry that line across or alternatively you could use one of these if you're a good schoolboy you'll have one of these and we can set that in that's what I'm going to do now set that in the center I've marked the um, diameter already and I'm going to mark that round and the point where that circle line and those cross lines meet there that is the exact point where we need to drill an 8mm hole to accept these lugs here. I'm going to go and do that on the pillar drill. I'm not going to film that because as I've said before it's a bit dull watching somebody um, drill in a hole but I'm going to use a centre finder to make sure I get exactly the point. In fact what I'm actually going to do is just punch a tiny little hole at each point there to make sure I get the drill centred and I'm going to drill down eight millimetres into there. So I've drilled um, my eight millimetre holes here. Um, I've gone down around about seven, eight millimetres. If you go a little deeper it doesn't matter but don't go very deep because two of these holes have to have um, pilot holes in for securing the, the pepper grind to the top. Now you can put those in at this point if you want to or you can leave them till the end. I'm going to leave mine till the end. So having drilled those what I'm now going to do is remount this back on the lathe um, and we're going to take out the centre section then and actually use the pepper grinder itself to make sure we've got a good fit in here. And we'll now find out how accurate my drilling is because I was disturbed halfway through doing this. the way hopefully I shall find that the tailstock will come up and go exactly in the same point that it did last time yes it does there we go and that's why I haven't removed it from the chuck here it also helps with the chuck I've done this on a on a pillar drill um, just to secure this actually on the pillar drill base it holds it quite steady it's quite nice and heavy stops the wood moving at all now at this point, if I had a Jacobs chuck, which I have got, and a 45mm Forstner bit, I could use a 45mm Forstner bit to drill in there. But I suspect, like many of you out there, I don't have a 45mm Forstner bit. I've got a 38mm bit, but actually what I'm going to do is just take this centre piece out, um, and it's where I've marked the um, circle before. That's the diameter. We've already got that marked on there. I'm just going to take that out with um, a chisel. Now I've turned down this part around about um, seven millimetres just to the point where the drill holes have, have gone and we can now use this just to test fit. I'm not convinced and I haven't quite got my lug um, drill holes in, in exactly the right place. I think I possibly marked them slightly wrong so I'm going to have a slight gap um, on mine but that's a pretty tight fit in there um, and as you can see uh, with a tight fit, let me just zoom out a bit. Um, it's actually been held on there quite firmly as it is anyway so once that's screwed it's a much firmer fit with the top actually inset um, sorry the grinder actually inset into, top, into the top of the blank here but I'm going to remove that and we're now going to drill 
the 25 millimeter hole down the center so the grinds when it's being used can actually get out. Now for drilling the center shaft out um, I'm going to use a Forstner bit. That's the length of a normal Forstner bit, not very long and I'm actually want to drill in here 100 mils. Um, that isn't long enough. I've got one of these um, Forstner bits designed for drilling at a, a funny angle, I think. Um, or you could use an auger bit, um, whichever you prefer. But I'm going to drill 100 millimeters into here, um, double check the measurement that I've drilled, and then actually use a parting tool to um, make a mark at this point so I can then look at shaping this having drilled the hole. So let's do that now. So I think I've drilled 100 millimetres down the inside but I'm going to double check that. In order to double check it I've got to get rid of all this muck in here which I could blow out and get a mess everywhere but I'm actually just going to take the chuck off again and just tap it to get all the, uh, the sawdust out. Because there is, as you will see, quite a lot. And I can then just double check the length that I've got there. I've set that to 100 mils. It's fractionally short, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so that's the length I'm going to go with. Um, we'll mark that on the outside here and we'll use a parting tool just to put a little mark here. So I've brought up my tailstock for some support in there. Um, I can get to this part of the blank here to shape it. I can shape that. I'm going to put this little cut in here with the parting tool. And what that's done is mark this section so we can now look at shaping this section as we want and then what, I'm, what we're going to do is go on and um, when we've parted this off and finished it by hand and fitted the grinder kit we're actually going to make a little base out of this part here. What I didn't mention is the reason I've gone for 100 millimeters on here is because it's roughly hand size so you need to be able to hold this and then grind the top and that's just a comfortable kind of size to hold. I've got sort of medium sized hands, they're not massive, um, neither are they small. Obviously um, the pepper grinder needs to be suitable for ladies and gentlemen. So we'll go on and um, shape this as we want. If we get close to this um, end here, um, we'll just take a little bit more out with the parting tool and we'll just shape this as we now want. So having put a little bit of finish on this, we're now ready to part off this top section at the point we marked earlier here. I've put a little curve on the bottom just to make it easier because that bit's going to have to be finished by hand. So we're going to remove that now uh, and then we'll look at um, making the base to match the top. And it's a very dry old bit of wood this, but um, we're now just going to, I'm going to finish that on the belt sander. Um, and that's why we put the little curve on the edge just to make that a little bit easier to do and we'll then look at doing the base. Now we can see when we took the top part off it's left a little mark and what we're going to do is make um, a, an inset um, just so this part slots inside there and we'll then look at matching the top and bottom and finishing off um, with a, just a little gentle curve. So 
So having got a reasonable fit on the bottom there, we're now going to match the um, base to the top and then we'll look at a little bit of shape in that and then passing this off. And now we need to sand off the bottom of that and finish that by hand too. So I've sanded off the bottom of each thing and just put a little bit of um, polish on there. I haven't polished it up yet. Um, you may want to sand down um, the inside and put some kind of cedar in there. Some would say food grade um, finish in there. You can if you want to. Uh, the, it doesn't hold peppercorns. It's only for them to fall through. Um, and I, I think people are a bit obsessed these days with what's going to kill them and the one thing I know for certain is that we're all going to die of something but there you go so the two parts fit together like that the only thing now is for me to put the pilot holes in the top for the grinder and then screw that in place I'll do that now these pilot holes are very important do not try to screw any small screws in without putting a pilot hole in first Okay, so we've got all the bits ready. What I'm now going to do is give you a sermon about screws. And uh, the reason I'm going to do this is because we have people that come to us and say, your screws are useless. They keep breaking. Well, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Screws don't break. What you have to bear in mind with um, a lot of our stuff is the screws are very small. If you have a two millimeter screw, the shaft of that screw will likely be one and a half millimeters wide. And any piece of metal that's only one and a half millimetres wide is not going to be very strong, particularly if you try and screw it without putting in a proper hole first. And with these, it's no different. The screws are slightly larger, they're about three mils, they've got quite a, um, a thick thread on them, but they need a two and a half millimetre pilot hole. It's really important you put the pilot hole in here first. In fact, what I'm going to do is take the screw, and I'm actually going to screw the screw in before I put the pepper grinder kit on the top just to make sure that it goes in right um, to make sure that we don't strip the heads out now it is quite easy to strip the heads out on these um, because you'll see when I put the pepper grinder kit on you can't actually get the screwdriver in flat it has to go at a slight angle because these screws are tucked under the main hopper section um, and you'll see that um, I've stripped these screws out a little bit that's because this is my test kit and I've had it in and out of lots and lots um, of other bits of wood to test um, which I don't always do before I make a video but I have this time um, and I'll, I'll show you one of my earlier versions in a minute in fact there's a, a picture of it on the website so I'm just screwing those in there to make sure that when it comes to screw the actual proper kit in place I'm not fighting with the screws. Now when you make the kit, bear with me I'm just going over here, here's one I did earlier and this is the one you'll find a picture of on the website, I'll put the other one up as well, um, but I, I've shaped this and I then in my um, infinite wisdom went to drill the pilot hole because of the shape um, I actually, I don't know whether you'll see it, but I, the pilot hole actually came through there. I drilled way too far, um, admittedly, but it's just something to watch out for. Watch the shape of the top here when you're drilling the pilot hole to make sure you don't drill all the way through. And equally, if you put the drill hole in first, make sure you don't turn down to that drill hole. Um, so that's just a word of warning on that. Um, so we're now ready um, to get the um, pepper grinder, put it on the top and screw it in place. You will need a PH1. The other thing about screws is you do need the right type of screwdriver. It's not a posi drive, it's a PH1 Phillips head 1 screwdriver for these little screws. You get two screws with the kit, so look after them.
And there we have. If I just zoom that out a little bit. There we go. One anti pepper grinder kit. Let's just tighten that to screw up with a separate base. The base I've put a tiny little curve in the bottom, um, just so if you get when you it's not if it's when you get some grinds that fall out, they fall out and just collect in the bottom bit and don't hamper that sitting on there. Um, and hopefully that is quite an impressive and fun kit. We'll take a still of that um, and pop it on the website. So there we are, hopefully a slightly different um, designed um, piece than you've seen before, hopefully a little bit more useful. Um, I do try and think about the actual practicalities of using stuff uh, rather than just making it look nice, it has to work as well. Uh, it does for me anyway. Um, so there's the, uh, the little box section underneath that fits in there and that's really quite a nice little kit. There's a little hopper cover there, that's where your peppercorns go in, the grind adjusts on the top there and as I said before the handle you need to turn around um, but they are all cast metal gears, cast grinders inside, it's a really really nice little kit and very impressive when it's, um, when it's on your table. Um, thanks very much for joining me again, um, happy turning, um, have a look around the website, I always have to say that because that's how I make my living um, and we'll see you in the next video. Happy turning. Bye-bye for now.